In uh, this episode of Lacrosse Film Room, we are going to take a look at dodging from X, uh, more specifically dodging from behind the cage and beating your man on the high side. And even more specifically, we're going to do it through the lens of Ryder Garnsey. There's a lot of guys who are great at beating their men uh, from behind the cage. Ryder Garnsey is one of the best. Other guys come to mind, Ben Reeves due to his size, Pat Spencer, same thing due to his size, Justin Gutterding due to his speed, agility, and his grit. Ryder Garnsey, he's more like a Gutterding in, in the way that he dodges from X. He's not a huge guy. He's a little guy, He but he's strong. He's able to get his hands free without... Uh, necessarily beating his man so there's a lot of a lot of upside to Ryder Garnsey's dodging game and uh, let's uh, take a look in this first play here we're going to take a look at uh, Costabile it's going to start getting the ball down to X and what we see right away Garnsey's man screwed ball is here Garnsey's man is here. So Garnsey's man is going to end up taking the angle and try to get behind. He'll actually do a good job of trying to recover in here, but Garnsey's going to get the ball at X. We'll watch. You see, terrible shape. So guys, anytime you you get your defender what we call hung up, and in this case, he's not actually hung up because he is going to chase him. But anytime you're at X and your man is not, and he's goal line extended or or even higher in this case, you automatically want to pick a side and go. In this case, he's picked the right side. He wants to go opposite where this man is. He's going to do that. You're going to see the pole. He actually does a good job of getting back. Right here, you'd almost think that he was, he was caught up. The problem is Garnsey's running uphill, and he's still running side to side. He's got his foot down right there but he's, he doesn't have anything to push off at this point. So in the next step, Garnsey's going to get the separation that he needs. You see there, there he's beat high. There he's beat even worse. He has his hands free. Ball goes in the net. We'll see it from another angle. Hung up. Pole has no chance. Garnsey purposely comes up this side here. Pole is going to break down and make contact here. Looks good. But you see, Garnsey, that, this is where Garnsey has the step. And now his hands are free. And as he lets that go, this pole just can't get anything else done. He, he did everything he could to try to recover. Beautiful shot, beautiful finish. All right, on this play, we're going to see Costabile bringing the ball back to Garnsey at X. And just like before, we end up seeing Garnsey's man. Here's that, that imaginary line that I was telling you about. And then let's put another line here. And another line here. All right, so this is no man's land for the poles. If you're getting the ball at X, like Garnsey is right here, and your pole is either in this area here or even just this area here, you want to go opposite. So you're going to see his pole is in the worst spot. He is in both of those areas. He is be he is still in front of goal line extended while um, Garnsey has the ball at X. And he's in this terrible no man's land. I tell people, watch that pipe. And even just if your pole was coming down in this area on the pipe, you'd still want to dodge them hard up because they have this back crease area to contend with. In this case, this dude is completely out of position. So let's watch it a little bit more. You see Garnsey as he approaches the actual back of the cage here, this, this little point here, his pole is still in terrible position. Now his pole is going to have to try to come across the crease to try to catch him. He does so, but you saw Garnsey kind of get a little pep in his step there. That's because this guy's still breaking down this way. Garnsey's now going fully upfield, and you're going to see him dunk this. Boom. Backhand. Beautiful. So let's see it from another angle. You just see right here, the pole... Still trying to break down this way because he was coming from literally all the way over here when Garnsey was about in this area here. And Garnsey's just going to come up, wrap around. The pole's already out of position. Garnsey already has him beat. And you just see him bury that beautifully backhanded. Okay, here's another one uh, with Garnsey. And in this one, once again, you're going to see he's got his man hung up. Poor guy. I think it's the same guy that got hung up the last time we showed the Michigan highlight. And uh, he's going to get win out of the way. And he's going to pretty much pick a side. He can go either way now that he's got him hung up. But what we see, once again, I'll have that imaginary line. And then we got this line here. This defender here, he's in this upper oh crap quadrant. So it makes sense uh, that Garnsey's going to pick uh, the, the left side to come up. 
He dances, and this is all he's trying to get him to do. He's trying to get him to commit, and he, he keeps him in that bad area, that bad spot. So you see he's in this spot here. So once he's done toying with him, he comes up. Now, at this point, I would have liked to see the pole. He came straight across to here and met him here. What he really should have done is come a little bit further upfield. I think with Garnsey, you're afraid of getting inside rolled a little bit. If he had come a little higher, then Garnsey wouldn't have been able to just keep coming on him like he does. And now you see, that's it. What Garnsey's always trying to do is get those hands free. You see how, how far back he's got his arms held out. He's got his stick way back here. His pole's still not in terrible position and, and does a pretty good job of closing. But right there is where Garnsey, instead of continuing to come up, this is where Garnsey's going to kind of wrap this check and his hands are free, so he doesn't care that he's actually guarded and he has a man on him. His hands are free. He's got all of this room here to kind of wrap an underhanded shot. Pole guess is wrong. His stick is upfield as he's trying to get the push on. And you're going to see Garnsey sticks that beautifully. So once again, the pole gets in, and that was where he went wrong. He went wrong by not breaking down and continuing upfield. He breaks down and then stick check tries to hold him with his stick instead of getting getting his body further upfield. If he had his body and his feet further upfield in this area here, or even in this area here, Garnsey does not have this angle because now you're going to see Garnsey start to try to come around. Little hop, got him in the face, hands free, goal. Okay, we got a similar play here. We're going to see the ball get to X. And as I continue to say, Look where the guy is. We got the line down here, and we've got goal line extended. And actually, in this case, he's just going to use it to shake him. The pole is meets both requirements. He is in what we call no man's land. But he is going to break down, and uh, obviously this was predetermined uh, from this attackman here. He kind of takes the step like he's going. He probably could have gone up that side, but you see him shake him bad and he's going, he's got his foot planted. And while he's dancing over the cage, you can use that cage area to your advantage as he's dancing over top the cage. He changes direction. Now, same as the other situations, he's coming upfield. Pole is breaking and we've even got a pick here, uh, screwing it up a little bit more. And you're going to see the defense, they don't really commit either way. He just goes high, hands-free. It's already too late. And the reason it's too late is because by the time he gets here, he's got them both on his back. He's starting, you know, by the time he gets this next step out, he's in this area and his hands are free. And that is the problem. Hands-free, moving away from his defenseman in this case. They don't have the ability to get a check on him. And he scores it. Beautiful shot. Excellent goal. All right, on uh, this one, this is going to be less beating him on the high side, beating him badly, but the, the 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 help or the pole recovers, and we'll see Sowers in this case here uh, getting a, scoring a high side goal. It's still con technically the high side, so let's take a look. They're just going to work the two-man game to perfection here. So we see the pick set perfectly. Sowers sets him up perfectly, comes up and then runs his man into the pick, and, and the pick is going to eat his defender, and he is gone up this side here. Boom. He is now gone. You're going to see the pole try to come through and continue to pursue. And, and because here Sowers has him smoked, but this is where he wants to take that extra step up. So he's got him beat on the high side. Help didn't really come. The pole's going to try to recover and Sowers is just going to dance right around the crease here. And we'll take a look at the replay. By this point, you already see Sowers has him beat badly. Pole still in pursuit. Sowers, instead of just kind of taking the shot here and trying to wrap it around the goalie, he's going to take what they call the, the extra step to greatness. So here the pole would have almost been better suited just coming up here and trying to blast him. He doesn't know what Sowers is trying to do, though, so he's just going to try to get a, 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 a check in. Sowers is going to eat it and get that off. And we'll see it again. This time a little bit more space. You can see getting off the pick... He's coming up, and this is where a lot of attackmen want to take that shot right here. What Sowers does is he's got him beat badly on that high side. The help can't get there. He's going to wrap around the crease. I used to tell attackmen, here is where you can start throwing stick fakes and your defenders are just going to watch you. And in essence, that's what Sowers is able to do is he just gets it off. All right, uh, on this next one, we're going to watch one of the greats from dodging behind and beating his man on the high side, uh, Michael Krause uh, from Virginia. So on this play here, 
You're going to see Kraus comes up, pulls in great position. And, and this is really good position because he's planted. He's coming upfield with Kraus. Kraus is running this way. He's got him hooked. He's going to be able to get a push off to throw Kraus a little bit off his step. There's the push. But now this is where it almost stops being a dodge from X, even though it still is. And this is where the pole screwed. He tried to hold him a little too much. Now his foot's up. Kraus is strong, and he's going to lean into this. Keep going. Now he's got the step. Pole's behind him, and he muscles that shot through. Kraus is great at this. Now look, this is where it goes wrong. He's He, he got the push in and pushed him off, but now he's going to try to recheck you see this foot's off balance. He should have been trying to close and he should have tried to continue to get on the high side and force him back down. He doesn't. He lets Kraus keep trying to go up without him getting any any upward uh, movement upfield for himself. Now he's in big trouble because he's just holding Kraus with his stick. Kraus is going to wrap around and get that free. Boom. Beautiful shot. And uh, this time we're going to watch Kraus do it again. Same same spot. This is a brutal stretch for Notre Dame where Kraus, I think, rattled off three or four goals uh, in that stretch. Two-man game, nothing happens. They don't use the pick. And once again, he's trying to push and, and check Kraus in that key point goal line extended, and he's even with him. When, you're, when you've got your attackman here, he wants to be here, and instead his feet are here. His feet should have been here. Then you force Kraus back in, and you got inside help. And you're, you're just going to, and then his own guy to make it worse and add insult to injury. Boom, boom. These guys are going to run into each other. Kraus comes right in, gets that shot off. Once again, taking that extra step to greatness, though, too. That's important, is getting that extra step. And you'll see it here. He could have let it go here. He could have let it go here. But he knows he has room. He's starting to fall. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot, Michael Kraus. And because he's one of the best, we're going to watch Kraus do this again. And this is actually this is actually ridiculously good defense by Nick Mellon. You can see here, running with him upfield, he's got the hook on him. Forces him back, though. So like I had been saying, he was on the high side. He had him covered. Kraus had nothing up here. He's now going to force Kraus to go back behind the cage. And here's where he's going to go wrong. Uh, perfect position. This is what you want. This is what I was talking about. You can see he's his feet are this way. He's forcing Kraus back down. He's going to try to put a stick. He's going to try to do a little bit too much, but that's good position. Good position. But now instead of keeping his feet going, now he goes for the check and misses. So he misses his check, and now Kraus is going to go back up. Mellon still recovers well, but now there's the high side. Now this is just a matter of... There's no, the, the help didn't get there. Now he's out front of the cage with his pole on his back. That's getting beat on the high side. It's the definition. And Kraus gets his hand free, gets a shot off.